Guitar Amp Nuts, what's up? It's Pete Thorne. Welcome to the studio. Hey, on this edition of Amps in the Zone, I am super fortunate and stoked to have an amazing amplifier here in the studio. Super duper rare, one of only 60 or so made, I do believe. It's an original train wreck Liverpool. So I kind of gave up the goods on that song at the beginning of the video. You heard what it's all about. It's just super juicy, dynamic, touch sensitive, really responsive to like volume control changes, pickup changes, and one note can just take off into three at the drop of a hat. Like the harmonics are off the charts feedback, all that good stuff. It's just really, really fun. What an expressive, fun amplifier to play. I can't sort of stress it enough. So the deal with train wreck amplifiers, story goes like this. A guy named Ken Fisher, who learned electronics in the Navy originally uh, from New Jersey, and after he got out of the Navy, I believe he started working for Ampeg sometime around the mid to late 60s. After he got out of there, he set up shop kind of on his own. And by the early 80s, maybe 82 or so, he started producing amplifiers that he called train wrecks under his, his own brand. And it seems to me that he never had aspirations of getting like super big or anything like that. He was happy to kind of make amps in very small quantities, super high quality. He was really into like NOS components, NOS tubes, all that good stuff, and kind of tuned in each amplifier as I understand it individually. So like this is a Liverpool model, but maybe no two Liverpools are exactly the same with the exact same component spec, that kind of thing. He would like tune them in uh, you know, by hand, by ear, and maybe for the individual player that ordered the amp, because I think they were all custom orders. So sadly, Ken Fisher passed away uh, a number of years ago. Uh, he became quite ill, and when he couldn't actually build amps anymore, he was actually still doing designs and having other trusted companies, folks that he trusted, build his designs. So that's Comet amplifiers. The original Comet 60, uh, the KF50, the Concord, of which I have one sitting right there, those are Ken's designs. And he also designed the uh, Z-Rec uh, for Dr. Z. Also, I want to mention that train wreck amps are still being produced. There's a fellow named John Mark that was helping Ken out making the amplifiers in his shop. And he still produces amplifiers under the train wreck name. He's got the, the rights to do that and whatnot. And so you can still order a train wreck amplifier that's built by John. I've never played one of the new ones. Um, I know they're quite highly regarded, but in this video, we're gonna focus on this Liverpool amplifier, which is an original Ken Fisher made amplifier built in 1990. So there were three different models that he made, basically. We've got the Liverpool, like this one. Uh, there's the Rocket and the Express. As I understand it, the Express and the Liverpool are pretty similar in their control layout and some things in the circuit. So what we've got here is a, a three-way bright switch and then a volume control, treble, middle, bass, and presence. But the Express amplifier has two EL34 power tubes, so the power amp's a little different. This amplifier is four EL84 power tubes. But keep in mind, when, it, when people think four EL84s, right away they go to, oh, it's a Vox, Vox-style amp. Not exactly, because this amplifier has a presence control, it's got a presence circuit, and it's also got negative feedback in the power amp. So it's a little bit different than a Vox amplifier, for sure. And definitely in the front end. Front end of these train wreck amps, as it's been described to me, is kind of like a Fender preamp. But the EQ in this one is much more Vox. But then you've got that different power section that's got some negative feedback and a present circuit and all that. So it's its own thing, really. Ken's designs were unique. The Trainwreck Rocket amplifier, much closer to an AC30 as I understand it, Ken would actually describe that amp uh, as uh, historical lore has it as uh, if a Vox had died and gone to heaven. Now, the only train wrecks that I ever played before were Express models, and they were really cool. That's the Dual EL34 model. Uh, and they were quite different. The, the few that I played, I played three of them. One allegedly was originally uh, belonging to uh, Billy Gibbons. Another one was George Lynch's. The George Lynch one was quite aggressive, and the Billy Gibbons one was much cleaner. So that lends a lot of sort of credence to the the theory that no two were the same. I think they were tuned in differently for the individual player that was gonna play them. Ken didn't even do serial numbers on these amps. He gave them all women's names. I believe the first one was named Ginger, and he stamps it like right on the chassis in the back of the amplifier. So it's cool, because they're so unique. Each one's got a name, actually, instead of just a number. Pretty neat. This one's all loaded up with old NOS tubes. Um, it's got Telefunk and EL84s in it. Looks like some sort of Philips mini watt in maybe V1, and I think Mullard's in the other positions. I was trying to figure out what speakers to use, and I pulled out my old 1960B cab here. 
Uh, this cabinet's loaded up with late 70s G12M uh, blackback 75 hertz speakers. So that seemed like an appropriate cab and like it would do the, an amp like this justice. It would probably sound really, really great through like some old maybe Alnico Celestians uh, in like an open back 212 or something too, I would think. Uh, but this cab definitely, you know, did the amp justice. I think it sounded really good with this amp. So to record all the samples, I decided to do it in the room here, which I don't normally do, but with an amp like this, you just kind of have to, because it doesn't have the magic if you isolate the cab out in another room that the amp is known for, which is all that crazy harmonic feedback goodness. So I'm micing it up with a uh, M160 down there on the bottom. That's a ribbon microphone, a bare ribbon mic, and a 57 up here. I'm blending them both just about equal, and I'm recording through two BAE Neve 1073 style mic pre's into Logic. So to play a bit more through the amplifier, I'm gonna use a couple different guitars and just kind of turn the knobs on the amp, flip the bright switch, and you're gonna get an idea right away of what this thing does. It's not a one trick pony, but it does kind of have this magic range on the volume control from about 10 o'clock to maybe two o'clock. And in there is a range of clean to dirty that's just magical. A lot of people might think too, seeing me sit right here like, whoa, isn't that really loud? It's pretty loud, um, but it's not that loud. It's kind of perfect club rock band volume i would say and i can sit here and play with it and yeah my ears were ringing a little bit afterwards but like not too bad and it never ever for as much high end as it has it never ever hurts or sounds harsh or uh, at all grainy or anything like that it's just this amazing guitar sound you get really used to the volume quickly and honestly i probably would damage my hearing after a while because i could just sit here and play this thing all day so let's get to it let's jam kids with your modelers and your damn in-ears are missing out on. No, I'm, I'm just kidding, but sort of. You know, it's like that magic that just happens. Um, okay, even if I play clean, if I go to the neck pickup, roll the volume down, check this out. It's like the seas parting and the angels singing. There's not that much gain. I mean, well, there's gain all the way through the amplifier, but it's not like it's just that preamp gain kind of sound, you know? There's just so much harmonic stuff going on. Which takes you different places musically, that's all. It's that feedback thing where it'll, it'll take you to some place that you wouldn't have thought of going otherwise. You know, you'll do that and then you just want to hold on to that for a minute as opposed to play a million notes. 
seems to be active, very active. So, um... chime machine, man, when it's up high. Bass control is, uh, there's a lot of bass. And there was a lot of bass in my Comet, too. It's the one mod I actually had done to my Comet Concord was I took a little bass out of the front end because it always felt like it was a little bit too much. Uh, it would make the amp collapse a little bit. This one's not too much, but I do have it down around two and a half or three, the bass. And then it helps the amp, because I like some distortion. So when I'm running the amp a little bit higher, like right now it's at 130 on the volume, and then turning the bass down a little bit helps to keep things tight. <laughs> bass on five. Like, see, that would be too much for me. Uh, but, you know, it might work at cleaner settings or maybe with single coils, but it sounds really good to me down just around like 10 o'clock. Turn the volume down to like uh, 10 o'clock or so. Let's see what that sounds like. Maybe with the single coils on the guitar. wants to rock this amp and it but it sounds great for rock <laughs> it's just a harmonics machine you know and it, it sort of makes you slow down and just appreciate letting things ring and swirl and all that good stuff <laughs> and then play one of my favorite songs for letting stuff ring.
I'm even playing it slow because it sounds good to slow it down and let the notes ring. Thanks for watching my video on the Trainwreck Liverpool Amplifier. Thanks to the owner as well 
uh, for lending it to me. I'm gonna have him on a future Sunday Live. Maybe I can feature him, ask him some questions about the amp. I really appreciate him getting in touch with me and uh, lending me the amp for a few days. It's just been a real pleasure. I just feel really fortunate that, uh, that I get these chances to, uh, to, to kind of have these little brushes with history. And I must say, I tried to do it justice with the ribbon mic and the 57 record it well here in the room, but there's nothing like being here in the room with it. Thanks to my buddy Gene at Ultrasound in New York City as well. He's the one that originally introduced me to Trainwreck amps, and uh, as well as the Comets. Thanks to Hoagie at Comet Amps as well as another pal of mine. These are great guys that are making terrific amplifiers that are carrying on Ken's legacy, really. As always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Please hit subscribe if you haven't. Hit the little bell beside the subscribe. You'll get an alert every time I put out a new video. I'll see you real soon for more videos. I am Pete Thorne. Take care. Over and out.